Hello, lovely. Hey, baby. <laughs> okay, ready for this? I am. How do our strengths and weaknesses complement each other? Oh. What do you, do you think? Want, do you want to go first? No, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so I think that for a long time, I've gotten better at it because of you, but for a long time, I would get really anxious when I would bring people together. And like, I felt like I needed to keep a lot of people in my life super separate. Like different friend groups? Different friend groups. And I wouldn't ever bring groups of people together. Like I kind of was like, okay, I go do this with these people. I do this with these people and I don't mesh them because then I would be worried about making sure everyone's happy and all good. And I think that you have an incredible strength of bringing people I love from bringing all people together. walks of life together and just kind of like letting it happen. Mm -hmm. And personally, I forgot with that, but I've gotten a lot better at it because of you, because I've seen how you do it. And I've recognized from you that it's not like up to me to make sure everyone's good Thanks, in those baby. situations. So I, I value that a lot, a lot of that about you. Um, why you have a lot of friend groups. Yeah, I guess maybe you do. I just have like a lot of random friends in different places. It's a lot of, it used to be more groups. Like when you're younger, you kind of have groups and then yeah. you just start having like people in your life. Yeah. And what part of bringing people together makes you anxious feeling like i need to make sure everyone's good like having a good time enjoying the other person creating good conversation but it's not like up to me i can help create an environment where they can do that which is so important right but it's not like i have i don't have to control everything with it mm -hmm. and it's up to those people also to take advantage of a moment of meeting somebody new and do you feel like that control is something that you've learned to let go of or just acknowledge that you don't have control? I think that I've let go of more control. And I also think that through meeting more and more people mm -hmm. and expanding the people in our network, it's less like distinct groups that exist in my life and more just like an abundance of amazing people that can continue to kind of interconnect. But you're really good at interconnecting everyone and, and like finding a place where somebody lives in a completely different realm or does something completely different and then somebody else lives over here and does something completely different and finding a way for them to have a desire to connect. Like a common ground between them? Yeah. I've been thinking a lot more recently about, I feel like the word empathy and being an empathetic person gets used a lot. Yeah. And something that I think I've, I've always struggled with is, is truly putting myself in somebody else's shoes. I think it's a very difficult thing to do, or at least it's very difficult for me. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is like, obviously we don't know what it's like to live somebody else's life, but to put yourself in a position where you are being thoughtful and considerate of somebody else's experiences over your own. And I find what I do often is that I try to build an understanding with somebody through my own experiences instead of holding more space for their experiences. And I think that that's like a real weakness of mine. It's something that I think I need to spend more time, create more space to do that um, and to like truly put myself in somebody else's position and understand the way that they might perceive a certain situation. Mm -hmm. And I think that that being a weakness of mine is actually a real strength of yours. So we'll have conversation where I'll come home or I'll be, um, since we're working from home, I'll talk about a business relationship or a personal relationship where I'll say, I can't believe that, or can you believe that this person didn't see it the way that I saw it? 
or this was their response to it. I can tell it's a strength of yours because your intuitive reaction isn't to side with me mm -hmm. and see it from my perspective, your lover, your partner. It's actually to put yourself in the posi person's position that you might not have as much of an intimate connection with, I think is something that you work very hard at, um, but also as a part of your DNA. We all have our things with our moms. I get that from her. Yeah. She's always like, even with like- She's done it with me. Yeah, when I come to her and, and I've said things like bad about you. <laughs> <laughs> she's been like, she's been like, Aaron, well, maybe this is why he feels like that. And she doesn't side with me, which I think is a really amazing strength because like she's my mom. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think when your mom is, or you grow up with somebody kind of like almost coddling you in that way where they always take your side and everything is to the extreme, then you miss out on like being able to see it from someone else's perspective. I was always envious of the kids in elementary, middle school and high school who when the principal called their house, their parents defended them. Yeah, oh my God. Oh, I wasn't envious. I was like, oh, that's so annoying. <laughs> I mean, I just never got that. It was like always the harsh opposite. Oh. It was like, I can't believe he did that. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. it was like never siding with me, mm -hmm. um, which might like, you know, I think that we're in this like interesting phase well, you where were, you were kind of you know. devious. Mm. <laughs> yes. Um, but I think we're in this interesting phase now where as we're more contemplative of why we are the way we are and the compounding things that happen throughout our lives that made us this way, we often like end up having these conversation about our parents. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And so that true. impact. When you think about areas that I can help you in mm -hmm. from like a weaknesses perspective, is there anything that comes to mind? I mean, I learned so much through seeing you do things and just seeing how it happens. Um, and your choices that you make, but I feel like sometimes it could be interesting to hear your thought process when it comes to like when you choose certain people to connect, like if there ever is a moment where you get anxious and you feel like something wasn't right, like how you kind of moved past it, if that ever happens, I don't really know, mm -hmm. but I would like to hear kind of like the thought process behind it when you do it. Yeah. I think that for me, I'm starting to realize that in this like 2020 this year, mm -hmm. I've just been so what's the next thing? How do I get to the next spot? You know, like yeah. what else can we add to the list of things to do? How many more people or things can I take on? And that is like really exhausting. Yeah. And it's like put me in this place where I'm the most fulfilled I've ever been because we've got all these things that are happening that are really exciting. And simultaneously, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm like, I'm completely like empty right now. Like sometimes when my head hits the pillow at night, I'm like, you know, you, you get to see that. Yeah. Where I'm just like. I get to see it. Yeah. I, I think I, as you being kind of like, the only person that gets the ability to tell me when or when not to do things. But you don't always listen to me. <laughs> I know, but I, I do increasingly so. If you see me heading down a path that you think isn't not necessarily right for me, but right for my health, mm -hmm. um, I want you to, to raise a flag because I think it's a weakness of mine that I don't necessarily spot when I'm running myself into the ground. It takes that third party perspective of somebody you love and trust to say, hey, like maybe you should slow up. And I think vice versa too for me as well because one thing I think a lot of people can relate to when it comes to this time period in life, like with COVID, it's put everybody into like this survival mode, which does really push people to their max, like they're constantly wanting to add on and bring more and do more and make sure everything's okay. And I think it's sometimes hard to recognize when 
you need to pull back when you're in that mode. I felt that too. I've had moments where I'm like, I'm taking on too much stuff. But I think we've also had some really good conversations over the past couple of weeks where, and especially with you recognizing like, hey, I know you want to do this, but like you might be putting a little bit too much energy here when like you could be going somewhere else. Where are the places that we should be spending more of our energy? I think like right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Making more time for conversation. Yeah. I think um, just taking some time to also like evaluate if you're in the right place and what you're doing is right. I feel like you have, actually, this is a strength of yours. You like feel like you're always in a good spot. <laughs> like you're always where you're supposed to be. And for me, sometimes I have moments where I'm like, Am I in the right spot? I need to evaluate. And I don't know if you always understand that need to do that, but I think you've gotten better at just letting me evaluate. Cool. Love you. Thanks for doing